Hello, I'm David Chaston with 98.9, at Nine, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week at Everything You Need to Know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, we news China is reacting to economic pressures that are building on it. All eyes will be on Shanghai after 1 o'clock today when its stock market opens after their week-long holiday. While they've been closed, Hong Kong has dropped 7% and US benchmark interest rates have risen 18 basis points. Combined with the growing impact of US anti-China tariffs, a rout could be on the cards. And late yesterday, the People's Bank of China cut the reserve ratio for the country's major banks by 1%, effectively freeing up more money for their state-controlled banks to lend out. It is their fourth such cut in 2018 in an unusually large and broad policy move. China's foreign exchange reserves fell more than expected in September, down $23 billion to put $3.09 trillion in data released a few hours ago. In the US, markets fell at the end of last week as well. A ho-hum jobs report, even though the jobless rate was near a record low, growth was at, the growth was in low-paid jobs. The, the, the rate of wage increases slowed and their low participation rate didn't move. Markets are sensing the sharp rise in benchmark interest rates with another rise almost certain in 2018, and which will bring the day of reckoning closer. And the amount of US consumer debt grew at a faster rate in August than July, rising at 6.2% annual rate and a jump from a July rate of 5.1%. Neither are sustainable, and even the year-on-year -year increase of 4.6% isn't either. Canada also released its labour market data over the weekend, and that came in apparently very much better than expected. They had a gain of 63,000 jobs with a participation rate of 65.4% in September. The unemployment rate held at 5.9%. In Japan, household spending jumped 2.8% in August, at the fastest annual pace in three years as bigger bonuses boosted consumption. This was way above market expectations for a 0.1% fall. In India, their central bank surprisingly held its key interest rate at 6.5% despite fears of accelerating inflation. It was a decision that saw their currency drop, to, drop sharply to a new low, and many think another rate hike can't be far away. And a key high court decision in Australia tested whether a computer-generated notice can, can issue a penalty against a taxpayer on behalf of the tax authority. And the full federal court said such notices can't be relied on unless a real person issues them, not just a computer. Given that New Zealand IRD issues computer-generated rulings and claims against taxpayers in a wholesale way here, this opens up a whole new avenue for challenging the rulings of tax authorities. The US Treasury 10-year yield was up strongly at the end of last week to just over 3.23%, a gain of 18 basis points in seven days. Their 210 curve has widened to 34 basis points. Gold will start at $1,203 an ounce, a $12 gain for last week. US oil prices a little changed today at just under $74.50 a barrel. The Brent benchmark is just over $84 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar is starting this week sharply lower at 64.4 US cents, having fallen 2 cents in the past seven days. Because our benchmark interest rates aren't reacting to the US and global rate rises, it is our exchange rate that is making the relativity adjustment. On the cross rates, we're at 91.3 Aussie cents and 55.9 euro cents. That puts the TWI at 68.6 and a three-year low. I'm David Chaston. It was 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.